All right, can you guys hear me? We are coming back live to you at Fire Station 74 for the demonstration portion. I'm trying the 3G signal to see if we get a little better connection. Let me know if you guys uh, are able to hear me okay. Is the video coming in clear? Okay, great. Since we're outside for the demonstration, I'm gonna to try to use this instead of, instead of the uh, Wi-Fi from the station. So as you can see, we're back out here on Foothill Boulevard and we have Fire Station 74 from uh, Sunlit to Hunga area right behind me. We have some of our members getting ready for the demonstration. And I'm gonna take you actually a little closer so you can hear what it sounds like when we get a structure fire. In a few minutes, we're gonna have our dispatch center give us a ring down of, is what we call it, of all the information that we need to respond to any kind of an incident. And in this case, I have a feeling they're gonna ring us down for a structure fire. We're gonna have our members suiting up and in the background there, you're gonna see what we go through when we get on the fire truck, on the fire engines. We're not gonna pull out very far, we're just gonna pull out and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens on scene as the members go to work. You have any other questions for me right now as we're waiting for that call or? All right. I see a question about a mask there. When we are out in public, we are following all of the social distancing and mask policies that the city has put in place. When we're in the station, we try to distance ourselves from each other, but of course we have to always be training. So there are times like these when we are not gonna be wearing masks. You're gonna see that our firefighters are gonna suit up for a structure fire. And of course we are wearing our mask when we go into a fire, uh, but we do the best we can. As you saw, we have sanitation supplies all over the station. We're constantly cleaning our boots, cleaning our gear, wearing our N95 masks when we go on EMS calls, and we wear our face coverings. I have mine right here uh, stuck to my badge so that I can put it on really quickly if I end up out in the public talking to people. We really appreciate when the public is wearing their masks as well. It keeps uh, them safe, it keeps us safe. It's uh, unfortunate that we have to deal with this right now, but it is uh, something that we are adapting to and life goes on, we still need to do our jobs. So I'm really appreciative of all the members at our station that keep uh, coming to work day in and day out and doing what they need to do. I got a question if this is a single engine company. This is a, a light force company. In the Los Angeles Fire Department, we operate what's called a task force configuration and that's where we have a truck company like this one. This has the big long aerial ladder that's why we call that truck 74. And as I switch around here, you're gonna see where our pump is parked. Right now we have it outside for the demonstration, but this is engine 274 or pump 74. This apparatus and our truck company stay together all the time. Our truck has all of our ladders and our heavy equipment. Some of that heavy equipment you're gonna see a demonstration of when we send it over to Fire Station 88 for the, the last portion of our fire service day and they're gonna demonstrate some of the tools that they have. But this is engine 274, it always follows the truck and together those two apparatus are considered Light Force 74. Now that just is short for Light Task Force. In a task force station, there is a light force with the truck and the pump, and there is also a fully staffed engine company. If we had an engine company here, which we used to, it would be called Engine 74. I see a question here, how many of us are volunteers? None. We are a fully paid department. We do have what's called the cadet program, and I was actually part of that program before I got hired by the fire department 19 years ago. And I spent about five years as a, what we called an explorer at the time, but I was a cadet for about five years. That gave me a lot of uh, knowledge and preparation on what to expect from the job. And there's our tone. Virtual fire service, structure fire. For Life Force 74, Rescue 74, Rescue 874, Engine 24, Engine 77, Battalion 12, Task Force 98, Battalion 14, at 77, 77 Foothill Boulevard. So our members obviously suit up as quickly as possible in our structure firefighting gear when we get a structure fire. 
They're putting on their turnouts, they're putting on as much equipment as they can and still get in the apparatus safely. We have our driver, or what's called an apparatus operator, is the driver of the truck. That's AO, apparatus operator Vera. They are gonna be pulling right out here. And our pump would be following them up right here. And we are basically spotted right here in front of our fire station. We're gonna pretend that this is where our structure fire is occurring. We have our members that are pulling off equipment. They're gonna put their breathing apparatus on. We have firefighter Calderon coming around. He has his breather on his back. Firefighter Lopez is hooking everything up that he needs to. Here comes the nozzle. We're pretending that it's our fire station that has the incident. So he's putting his nozzle right at the entrance of where they're gonna make entry. We have our engineer, Ron Cavateo. He is in charge of driving this uh, fire engine, engine 274, and he is hooking up the hose line. He's in charge of calculating the pressures that are gonna be needed to pump. Firefighter Arroyo is simulating that he's cutting the door open to make access. This is what we would be doing on an actual structure fire. We make access as quickly as possible. And we're obviously simulating that that door is being cut open. It is opening up right now and our firefighters, we already have firefighter Calderon, who's our nozzle member. He already has his face piece on. He's ready to go inside, but he's waiting for his partner, firefighter Lopez, who just put this ladder up. Sorry you guys missed that, but he pulled this ladder right off of the back of our pump, right out of that compartment because it was just conveniently located. That was able to reach the roof and if we were assigned to roof operations, we'd be going up that ladder. So they're just about ready to make entry into this building. Firefighter Calderon could be cooling down the, the building if it was a really significant fire going on before they make entry in what we call a transitional attack. We have Firefighter Arroyo who just cut the door open, suiting up as well. And at this point, these firefighters would be joined by either the apparatus operator, if this was a truck operation, because as a captain, I would be in the cab running the incident until taken over by the battalion chief. So as they made entry here, obviously you can see very clearly that they're making their way into the building. This person would be back at the door. He's uh, assisting them getting their hose line into the building. There might be obstacles that he has to pull hose around so we can make it in. But at this point, we probably wouldn't be able to see anything. It would be very dark. The smoke would be banking down and these firefighters are low on the ground so that they can be under the smoke and the heat and be safe and hopefully be able to see something, but there's a good chance they wouldn't be able to see anything. So with that, these guys are doing all the hard work and I'm sweating here. It's a little warm in the valley, but we are gonna wrap this part up and we'll let these members get their stuff loaded back on the fire engine and the fire truck so that we can be back ready to respond to another incident. We already had one incident this morning that thankfully turned out to be a false alarm. It was a brush fire response up in one of our canyons. Thankfully, it was uh, just somebody's fireplace and some people naturally called the fire department because they smelled and saw some smoke, which we uh, are happy to respond out, of course. That's what we're here for. And fortunately, it was not a, an actual incident. So with that, I'm gonna look and see if we have any other questions. Well, thank you for all the the gratitude. We, uh, we really do appreciate all of you and uh, we are happy to bring this to you. Hopefully it was interesting, a little bit of insight into our fire station life. And hopefully next fire service day, we are able to bring you into the fire station like we usually do and give you demonstrations in person. Until then, I am gonna now be throwing this over to firefighter Margaret Stewart, who was on a helicopter out of our air operations and she should now be getting in place at Fire Station 88 in Sherman Oaks, where they are gonna be giving you another demonstration of some of the truck company operations that we do on incidents. So thank you very much, and that is all for now. Take care.